Hi, I'm Mel Majoros. I am a five-year cancer survivor. My blog, The Cancer Warrior, is one of the top ten breast cancer blogs according to blogs.com. I'm here to bring a fresh, upbeat perspective to a topic that to some may seem scary. A positive mental attitude got me through my cancer, and I hope to share that with you. Today we're talking to Bethany Candell. She's a New York-based journalist and breast cancer survivor, and also the creator of BreastCancerFreebies.com. How are you today, Bethany? I'm great, thank you. Excellent. So we we met uh, a few years ago online. You were doing an article about, uh, I believe it was BreastCancer.org or something about survivorship, and that's how like we support met. Support groups. Yes, thank you. Support groups. See, the chemo brain just comes out all the time. <laughs> um, and we had met that way, and we kept in touch, and then you had contacted me about your great organization, uh, your website that you started. But I want to talk about, uh, it's been five years since your cancer diagnosis. Do you want to uh, tell me a little bit about all that? Sure. I just hit my fifth year anniversary, I think two weeks after yours. Yay. So we're both celebrating. Hey, hey. <laughs> um, I was diagnosed th- like a week after I took my oldest son to college. I was oh. felt like I was on top of my game. <laughs> just turned 50, got rid of one kid successfully, um, was exercising. I don't drink, smoke, do none of that bad stuff. And here I was, they found a lump. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was in a follow-up sonogram for something that disappeared. But luckily, I was following up um, because this appeared and sort of just threw that monkey wrench into my life, which I never had expected to hear the word cancer. Um, It just didn't enter my mind. So it was kind of a shock. Um, I ended up, I say I had cancer light because I hear such awful stories, and I'm thankful that mine wasn't the worst thing you could have, although it still was cancer. I had a lumpectomy. I did have chemo and radiation. But it seemed, in retrospect, it went by fast, and I'm out of it, and my hair is all back, and I feel great, and hopefully never hear those words again. Yes, exactly. (laughs) So so that was pretty, well, I guess you had it pretty easily then. Did you lose your hair? Did you go through any? I did lose all my hair, Mm -hmm. and I had that little nice bald head. (laughs) We wore hats everywhere because that draft somehow finds your bald head, (laughs) even in the nice warm apartment. (laughs) But it, that really was the worst of it. I didn't have nausea because they do have good meds these days. Yes, and they do. I had a good support system, and I, I learned so much in my journey that it's now sort of my focus in writing. Um, I was writing about a lot of other things, and now I love to write about breast cancer because I have found so many interesting things um, to write about. Well, tell me a little bit about what you have written about that's interesting, and then we'll sure. jump right into... I want to say great people, amazing, yes. amazing people. It's that club you don't ask to join, <laughs> but once you're in, the people are incredible. And it's I'm true. I'm thankful I've met them all, like you. Yeah, same here. Um, I've written well about support groups, about free retreats, um, about what to do once you get that diagnosis the first thing you do, and I started it with, first you cry, you call your mother, you call your insurance company. Um, And (laughs) I went from there, like what websites to go to, and real hard nails, you know, what to do. Because most articles, I'm so sick of those October articles, how to avoid (laughs) breast cancer, and what to do so you don't get breast cancer. You can't do that, because I did it all. I still got it. So I found, I just want to write about the things people really care about, the real you know, behind the scenes facts. And I kept finding, like, the secret in breast cancer was that there were amazing free things out there. I just found so many things. I went to the American Cancer Society and got a free wig, a gorgeous wig that I could pick nice. from. They didn't just throw me an ugly used wig. It was a beautiful new wig, and, and I, they styled it for me and everything. And then someone sent me from um, Lydia's Project in Atlanta this beautiful tote bag that mm. said hand-embroidered hope on it and filled with chemo care items. And I just kept finding wonderful things, and I said, I have to keep track of this. And I started writing little articles, and then... I found I had so much material, and I just kept finding more. I said, I have to start a website. And thus, I started BreastCancerFreebies.com on my fifth year cancerversary, so it's perfect. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, because it's, it's hard just going through treatment and dealing with if you're still working your, your job and your family and everything else because you want to re- retain some sense of normalcy and then trying to figure out, well, how am I going to pay for this? If you have, you know, even if, even with the insurance, obviously it's expensive and who right. can help me. But now you have a website that has everything right there. 
And there's just there's a lot out there, and you don't have to be low income. You don't have to have show any need for most of these things. There are some things on my site under financial assistance. You can even find copay um, places that will help you pay your copays awesome. and pay for the gas to get you to your treatment. So if you have no money, there are ways to help with the things that insurance doesn't cover. But a lot of this stuff is sort of just lovely things to make you feel good. There are people who will give you a teacup and filled with like good cheer type things, like just little lovely things to make you feel good. And there are people who will send you greeting cards along the way through your journey. And these are often, a lot of them are women who either lost a friend, a mother, a sister, or someone, and they decide this is their way of giving back. They start this little organization. They try to do a little fundraising. They don't have a lot of money, but they're willing to send free things to you if you contact them. And all the places to contact are on breastcancerfreebies.com. <laughs> now, isn't it, how hard was it to find all these things? All you these? know, I'm a good researcher. <laughs> That's why I'm a journalist. Exactly. Um, you know, they'd be like in one little line, a throwaway line in an article or a little contact, but they, none of them were in one place. And I just said, there's so many, and there's such great stuff people need to know about it. It's like this great secret. But um, people want to give these things away to you. There's ladies who are knitting all across the country, and they'll knit, you know, caps for you, for your bald head and scarves. And my favorite, one of my favorite freebies, you're going to love this. Yes. It's called Knitted Knockers, <laughs> as in what? boobs, knockers. And they also <laughs> make crocheted falsies. I just love those names. And there, it's a knitting store in Tempe, Arizona, of all places, just, you know, a small town. And uh, it's called Tempe Yarn and Fiber Store. And on Friday nights, women get together and they knit. And what they knit are like little, like pliable breast forms. Like <laughs> I call them little yarmulkes almost. They're like little, uh, just little breast forms. And they're very... Uh, like movable they're much more natural than the foam ones that you get mm -hmm. and they make them some of them have little weights in them but you can't wear those through security in the airport they told me <laughs> oh really you'll set off all the bells yeah oh my god that, that's funny they make, they make them with and without these little weights and you can put them in your bra you know whether you've lost a lot or a little they'll make them to the, your size you tell them what you know what letter you were a b c d whatever and they will send you these for free and people say they're so warm and soft and lovely. They're washable. They'll even send a pattern for free to people who want to knit them themselves. But I just love it. Knitted knockers for free. How sweet. That's awesome. And, and there's even fun things like um, Nordstrom's, which, you know, is a big store. Oh, yes. Everybody goes to Nordstrom's. Who doesn't love I, Nordstrom's? Right. It's Seriously. a great store. But I discovered that in almost all their stores, they have a prosthesis program where Free of charge, they will sew in a pocket so you can put your prosthetic into a swimwear camisole or bra that you purchase in their store. Hmm. So wow. you just go, if they have this program, which most of them do, they told me, and there's hundreds of them around the country, if you buy the bathing suit there and you need a pocket for your prosthesis, they will sew it in for you. And that's a great thing. They'll even help you file your insurance forms, like if you, you know, can get money back for some of that stuff. That's awesome because I remember doing all my insurance in the FMLA. It was just like when people hand you all this paperwork, your head is already spinning already. And then it's True. like, and I'm not, you know, I'm not a good person when it comes to forms. So I'll look, you know, you'll look at it and be like, okay, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, there's a, well, a lot of the organizations I mentioned on the site, too, mm -hmm. like Cancer Care and the American Cancer Society, they'll, they'll help you sometimes with things like that. You tell them what you need, and a lot of the organizations will say, well, if we can't do it, we're going to send you to so-and-so. And there's a lot of help out there, and a lot of it is free, and people should take advantage of it because people want to help. I found that that was the biggest thing, that people want to be good and help. And breast cancer, luckily, is an organ, you know, is a disease that gets a lot of publicity. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of money. We get a lot of people helping. But why not take advantage of it if you need the help and you want something nice to take care of? You There's a company called Cleaning for a Reason. If you're in chemo treatment and they have an organization in your neighborhood, they, they um, work with different cleaning companies around the country. You will get like a month's worth of free cleaning while you're in chemo. Oh, I should have known about amazing. that earlier. Jeez. I know. <laughs> it's 
just like lovely, lovely things. One of my other favorite things yes. are that there are a lot of retreats people can go on. Um, Casting for Recovery is one of the big ones. They're in almost like 33 states, I mm-hmm. think. And it's, uh, they teach you fly fishing, but you don't even have to like fishing. The main idea is it's bonding. Mm-hmm. And you just go and you apply for these weekends. They're actually by lottery, but they're completely free. Um, Sometimes you have to pay for your own transportation, but there are a lot of places, so there may be one near you. Um, You go for this weekend with a lot of other women, all breast cancer survivors, and you just bond and you talk and you just hang out, and it's wonderful. I did something like that called uh, Reeling and Healing Midwest, which is mostly, uh, which is only here in Michigan. And I got to say, you you think about fly fishing and you're just like, okay, well, this seems kind of interesting. Why would I want to be fishing? And like you said, it's not about the fishing. It's about like being one with your fellow survivors but also exactly. it makes you feel it makes you relax it helps you to relax just being one with nature it's true there, there really there's a lot of them out there um, I have a whole section of retreats um, and some are with your whole family even there's one in North and South Carolina where you can bring your whole family and a lot of these things are not just for patients they're for survivors so you could be 50 years out, good for you if you are, yes. 20 years out, 10, 5, whatever. If you're a survivor or a patient, you can qualify for almost all of these breast cancer freebies. And I love the things that include the family, too, because sometimes uh, the caregivers kind of feel left out because they it's have to do so a lot true. as well. It's true. Another another retreat that I found is called um, it's the Breast Cancer Wellness Magazine, and they sponsor one or two cruises a year. And they charge for them, and they have speakers and workshops, but they offer several scholarships, full scholarships, and one is for a caregiver. You can nominate your caregiver That's awesome. to win a free cruise. They're, they're going in a few weeks, um, and I went on one, and it's an awesome experience. And they also give them not just to caregivers. They pick one or two women who have entered their contest. They have a contest every year. It's over this year, but look on look on my website, breastcancerfreebies.com, and you'll find it, and next year you can apply, and maybe you'll be the winner. How was that cruise, by the way? Oh, it was awesome. It just, you know, anytime you're with your sisters, mm-hmm. um, and that's what we all are, the minute you're diagnosed, you're a sister in this club, people are so warm and welcoming, and they're like your immediate best friends. I made some really good friends that I have seen since then. And you just have fun. You learn stuff because you go to workshops and you get massages and you are on a beautiful cruise. So how bad could that be? <laughs> I agree. That sounds <laughs> Especially awesome. Especially if you get a free one. I mean, that's even better. <laughs> Did you get a free one? I actually was the winner last year. Nice. Which is pretty amazing. Um, and uh, it was great. But, you know, even I'm going to go back when I have to pay. Even. <laughs> <laughs> that's. I mean, that's just great. Especially, who doesn't want to go on a free cruise? Right, right. I think my, well, I I joke on the website. I say free is my favorite four-letter word. (laughs) And my husband made me add after love. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're right, honey. You love Sure, whatever you say. Whatever you say, dear. Sure. I'm a big freebie, freebie hunter. I love coupons and bargains. And I just think if someone's offering it and I can use it and it's free, how great is that? (laughs) Well, I agree. And also, like you said, people always like to help. And I think sometimes as as women, as mothers, as we're usually the caregivers, we are sometimes too proud to be like, you know, I don't I'll be fine. I'll be okay. I don't want your help. And and I kind of learned a little too late. It's like, you know, people want to help you just just suck it up and say, yes, I, you know, true. I remember when I was having my chemo and people would say, oh, we'll bring you dinner. But they should have just brought it. They, like, asked me, and I was proud. And I'm like, oh, I feel great. I'm making dinner tonight. And I'm right. like, looking back, that was really stupid. <laughs> like, yeah. Yes, I felt great, but feel great sitting and eating someone else's dinner. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And and people don't think about that, you know, because they may, th- your friends may be like, oh, that's great. But yeah, it, if I, well, I don't want to ever do it again. But if I went back in time, I'd be like, okay. Make me dinner if you want to drive Do me somewhere. You if you want to help me, that's great because, you know, like you said, people want to help and you should just not be too proud to accept people's help. It's true. And actually, I would like people to come to BreastCancerFreebies.com mm-hmm. who don't even have breast cancer. I'd love husbands to come, mothers, oh, yes. sisters, friends, because a lot of these things, you can apply for them for free. You can send this teacup or a hat or a card or, or a blanket or, or, or soap or 
scarves. It's just wonderful free things. And you can sign up your friend for them, and it'll arrive at their door and say it's from you. And how great is that? You sent a gift and a wonderful thing, and it didn't even cost you anything. Some of them charge you for shipping um, one or two. Most of the ones I have are totally free, but an occasional one will charge shipping. And you can make a donation. And I always say, you know, if you come upon a little money and someone helped you, give back to that organization. (laughs) Exactly. I love, well, you know, I love to pay it forward, so. Definitely. That's the whole thing of this website is, you know, people helped me and I learned things and I want to help the people behind me. I'm always willing to talk to someone who'll say, oh, my friend is, you know, diagnosed. I'm like, please have them call me because I can tell them it's not always as bad as you think. You know, right. Sometimes you just hear the word cancer and you freak out. But you know what? It's not always horrible. And you don't want to only hear the awful stories. I hated hearing like terrible stories because <laughs> I didn't think, you know, mine might not be like that. I didn't. I was hoping. And I'd rather hear the ones where, oh, I just breathed through chemo and the whole thing was fine and I got my hair back. Great. <laughs> yeah, you need a little section on what not to say to cancer survivors. Like, yeah. oh, my Aunt Sally died of breast cancer, but you'll be. Everybody says that. <laughs> There's actually a woman I know, um, Letty Cotton Pogrebin, is a well-known journalist. She just wrote a book called How to Be a Friend to a Friend Who's Sick. Oh. And it's filled with like great advice on what to do. I think she might even put breast cancer freebies in the resources. Awesome. Um, which would be great, but it's just really a helpful book because people always say the wrong thing. I mean, I'd almost rather them say something to me, even if it's wrong, than to ignore it because then you think, you know, do you not right. notice that I have no hair? <laughs> but, you know, people really are afraid. Cancer to them is still so scary. I mean, people still to this day will say to me, you know, how are you? I'm like, I'm fine. They're like, no, how are you? Yes. <laughs> like, you know, it's been five years. I look great. You know, I'm fine. I have hair. Nothing. Don't else. you want to go to them? I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> exactly. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> but anyway, so you have to learn how to say the right things. That's for sure. Right. You, or- you also mentioned. You mentioned mothers and children, and a lot of breast cancer survivors and patients are mothers. And I do have a whole section on, you know, what you can get as a mommy. And there's a book called My Cancer Mommy that is offered for free. And Charcheret is an organization that offers a busy box for breast cancer and ovarian cancer patients, which a lot of things do cover ovarian cancer. And it's like a whole box filled with toys and games to keep your little ones busy while mommy's at the doctor. And there's a lot of advice, you know, brochures from cancer care on how to talk to your kids about breast cancer because that's a big, big issue. And all of it's for free. <laughs> Should be how to talk to your coworkers, too, because sometimes... That's true. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that my coworkers are bad, but it's just like repeating the story like 10 times. Mm-hmm. It's just like... After a while, I just said to my boss, I'm like, you tell him because I just can't talk about this anymore. <laughs> That's true. Actually, that's why I did um, like a web, an email blast kind of to tell everyone because I, I knew my husband couldn't tell everyone and I couldn't. Right. And then I also have a section on breastcancerfreebies.com on staying connected. And there's a lot of um, now there's a lot of online organizations like lots. It's called Lots of Helping Hands. Yes, Caring that's a good Bridge one. is one. Care Pages. And they all have like web, you know, pages that you can set up, almost your own, um, you know, website, and you can put in, like, these are the dates of my treatment, I need rides on these days, or food on these days, or here's, you know, what you could do to help me, um, and just here's an update on how I'm doing. So there's a lot out there to help people organize all of that. Right, and that way you can just put an email up on there, so you don't have to, like, send a, right, you know, 500 emails to... And you don't have to say the same story over and over again. And, yeah, that's you know, It can be details, <laughs> anything you need to know, you can put there, and it just saves you a lot of time and effort. So what is your favorite? Like, I was looking at, have you tried the Swim of Dolphins? Cause that's oh, I have cool. not. I'm dying to. Uh, <laughs> that would be a great one. That's one of my favorites. Uh, this company in Key Largo, Florida, um, Dolphins Plus, it's called. And someone, another organization told me about them. That's how I find a lot of stuff through word of mouth. I'd love anybody who knows freebies, come on to my site, breastcancerfreebies.com, or my yes. Facebook page and send them to me because I'm going to keep updating. This site is going to keep growing. And I have a lot of local resources, so I want people to tell me I'm going to add your one um, reeling and healing for 
from yes. Michigan because yes. um, I, you know, there's a lot of things in New York City, but they're only for New York. So, you know, you go to that local resources section on my website and you can find things in your area. So I want to keep adding. Um, but the one in uh, the dolphin is like this woman. I don't know if she was a mother or she was somehow a relative of someone who owns the company. She, I think either she died, she might have died of breast cancer or she was, she had breast cancer. And they thought she loved so much swimming with dolphins that now they offer patients or survivors a free session swimming with dolphins. Um, and so what a great thing is that. So if you're in Key Largo, Florida, look them up. <laughs> it kind of makes me want to go a- down there. Right yeah, now. exactly. And you need a letter from your doctor for that one. And oh, some of the well, retreats, yeah. you need a letter, too, just to say you're okay. To right. Because they don't want just everything. Oh, yeah, I had cancer. Exactly. Nice one with the dolphin. Now. No, you can't. Because <laughs> I, I don't believe you at all. So what are some of the good things for children that you have? Um, I'm going to look right now on my site. Actually, <laughs> for children, um, there are, well, Noogie Land is a big one. That's it, all the Gilda's Clubs. Um, and I just read today they're keeping the name Gilda's Club. Yes. Some, some of them we're going to get rid of them. That's big news because, you know, Gilda gave the money for those things, and, and she should be remembered, even if people don't know her now. They thought young people didn't know her. But Yeah, I wrote a bad. blog about that because that was Yeah, they should close. learn about her. Anyway, at Gilda's Clubs around the country, and there's dozens and dozens of them, um, They have most of them have Noogie Land, which is like <laughs> a free club for children. Um, and if they have a parent or a loved one who's living with cancer or their parent died from cancer, they have noogie nights where you can go out and, you know, do arts and crafts and games. And they're all supervised by licensed social workers. So it's a safe environment where kids could talk about cancer, but they don't have to. It's also a fun place. Um, and Gilda's Clubs also have free exercise and, and oh. meditation and all sorts of things. Um, there's also some summer, a lot of summer camps. Um, there are summer camps for kids with cancer, but there also are some for kids whose parents have cancer, and they're free, and you could go for a whole week or sometimes longer um, every summer. Um, and most of them are non-therapeutic. It's just to be safe and supportive, but they could talk about it if they want, and it's a great, great thing. Well, I think being around other survivors is therapeutic, no matter what. Definitely. You know. For any of us, for us and as well as children, our parents even, you know, that's why I also list a lot of hotlines and websites mm-hmm. um, where you could go and you could get someone who was in your shoes to talk to because sometimes you really want someone who's very similar to you right. um, who could talk about either the stage of cancer they had. Some of them will match you really like the stage, the type of cancer very specific. Others will match you like by your background. There's a, an organization for African American women with breast oh, cancer, Jewish women. You could be HER2 positive and find a support group. High risk. There's like hundreds of um, them listed on my website as well. So what about the apps? Do you have a, you must have a smartphone because you're... You know, I don't. I'm one of those people what? who hasn't moved up. I will eventually, <laughs> but I know most people have smartphones. But you have, have all these great phone. apps listed yeah. on, your, on your phone. I'm surprised you, I mean, on your website, rather. I'm surprised <laughs> right. you haven't checked them all out. I know. I have checked them out, but I don't actually have them yet. <laughs> but there are some, there's a lot of them, and I think there's probably way more than I've even listed, and I'll go back in and, and list some more. But there's everything where you can um, help with, a, there'll be a glossary of terms and medical illustrations and your personalized information that'll pop up. Um, I think there are apps that will tell you, like, oh, it's time for your mammogram, don't forget, which is a great one. Oh, yes. Um, and, and just all sorts of coaching type things to help you through your journey. Um, and that's all on breastcancerfreedies.com. That's just awesome. <laughs> and that's great that, that you had the time to uh, do this and to set up this website. Yeah, I've been doing it. I've been collecting it for five years. <laughs> and every every October I say, it's time. This is a good month to come out with it. And another year passes. So my husband did. My husband, Gary, is the, the rock behind me. And he really pushed me forward. And he designed the website. And he did a great job, I have to say. And my son, Ryan who's a graphic designer, did my logo, which I love. I think it's very cute. It has a little, uh, like a tag, like you'd buy, you know, when you buy something in the store Mm -hmm. with a little pink ribbon instead of a string or a plastic tag. I like that. I like that. Did you? So it is a family affair. My other son's in college. I say he's my intern. Oh, there you go. So he'll have to uh, start working for you when he's done with college. (laughs) Now, how did he deal with this? Because you said you, was he the one in college? Or the other no, he was actually younger. So he was in, the, the older one was away. So he didn't see me that often. Mm-hmm. But my younger son, Jared, was in middle school at the time. 
and he, you know, I, I, I never, he didn't get upset about it because I was very calm and I said, you know, mommy's going to be fine. But it was very cute. He used to call me before he came home with friends and said, Mom, could you put your hair on? <laughs> <laughs> he just didn't want me to freak anyone out. I don't think they, they probably wouldn't even notice. You know how preteens and teens are. They don't even, mothers don't count for, they're not real people. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Well, that's great but, that, that he didn't, you know, because sometimes children freak out or they feel left out or. Yeah, no, doesn't. he was, you know, we talked to him a lot about it and he saw that I was doing great. And uh, he would joke, though, there was some, I remember one day waiting outside with him, and I was freezing, and he goes, Mom, it would be a great time for a hot flash. (laughs) (laughs) So we joked about things, you know, that was from my medication, he knows how I was always having hot flashes, and I still am. (laughs) I know what that's like. Yeah, really. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have anything about that on my website, but I'm going to look, because I know there are people who make special pajamas and pillows, but I don't think any of them are free. I need free things. Right. (laughs) Well, I know that, well, that's not free either, the chillo. That's not a free thing, but that's, you know, maybe put it But I'm sp- sure there's going to be more, and I know I keep finding it. I have a list of things that I have to add. Um, there are some teleconferences that you can find online about various things mm-hmm. um, that are really helpful. Um, I'm going to put a whole section of radio shows, and yours is going to go at the top. Sweet. It's all related to cancer, and it's free, right? <laughs> exactly. And and I love to have uh, people like yourself and other survivors on to t- tell about their story or about the organization or website that they have to help other survivors. Because for me, you know, as as we're heading on to the end of the show here, it, the show isn't really about me. It's about, it's about the guest. And that's my mm-hmm. way of paying it forward to other cancer survivors. Because if people want to read about me, they can look at my blog or... I don't know, shoot me a text, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, you know, just you putting your time and heart and soul and dedication into finding a web or starting a website rather for other people that, you know, you'll affect people's lives that you'll never meet. And that's just awesome. It's true. I get so excited when I see people click, like my numbers are starting to go <laughs> up on how many people have, you know, clicked through to Facebook. And I'm always like, yes, I think I hit 100 today and it's only up a few weeks. So I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> And I'm sure a lot more people saw it, but just didn't click. So click when you come visit BreastCancerFreebies.com and send me emails. I really want people to email me with free things that they found because mm-hmm. that's where I'm going to find them is from individual people. Right. And, and like I said, they're reeling and healing. And there's other things that we can talk about after the show that, uh, that you can put on there as well. And if there's any, uh, anyone listening out there who has an organization that's free to breast cancer survivors, you know, Leave it on Bethany's website, breastcancerfreebies.com, or on her Facebook page. That's right. I really welcome it, and I really hope to keep expanding it, and who knows where it will lead. Well, you got your first radio interview here, so. That's right. You're my first. (laughs) (laughs) I thank you so much. Well, you're very welcome. So do you have anything else uh, that you have planned coming up at all, or just... Keep on working on the website. Do you have any books that you're gonna you want to talk about? Or no, I really don't. This is real. I've been focusing right now, I am, and I actually am going to start pitching some stories for next October because all the magazines work way in advance. Oh. so I have a lot of good story ideas. Um, so hopefully, people will see me out there in other forms as well. You can write about swimming with the, the dolphins. Right when I do it, exactly. <laughs> to say, you know, New York Times, when you pay for my trip to Key Largo, Florida. <laughs> I can exactly. swim with the dolphins and then tell you how it is. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way? I'm not a writer. No, so. well, it sounds good. Some places <laughs> will work that way. Not always the New York Times. <laughs> well, no. i just using that as an example. USA Today would be a bigger market. I don't know. Right. I've written for them, too. <laughs> I know. You're just... That's why I was not not surprised, but I guess, you know, <laughs> I, I feel like you're a big-time writer. And when I asked you to come on the show, I was like, wow, she's coming on the show. Sweet. <laughs> Well, thank you. I like to get my stories out there. Well, you have. Well, tell me again uh, what the website is. Okay, it's Breast Cancer Freebies, and it's F R E E B I E S, freebies.com. And if you, in Facebook, if you put in, I think it's three separate words, Breast Cancer Freebies, it should pop up, hopefully, or Google it. <laughs> um, 
And if you can't remember, put in breast cancer and free, and hopefully it'll come up and you'll find me. Google is great. I do pop up pretty quickly now. Oh, so excellent. The more, the more people who come to me, the more you know my numbers go up and the higher I get on the list. So that's always good. That's right. And please, please write to me. Tell me how I've helped you if I have or how I can help you, what you're looking for. If I can find it, I'll try to help you find it because we all want to help each other. And that's you can do all that on the Facebook page or the website. Yeah, you can connect to me on either one. I'll answer you. Excellent. I have an email address, breastcancerfreebies at gmail.com, and you can find me, Bethany Kandel. <laughs> I can find you anywhere because you're a you're big-time writer. <laughs> Thank you, Mel. <laughs> well, hang on, Bethany. I'm going to wrap up like I usually do. That was awesome because I'm all about paying it forward, and this site does exactly that, and so do the organizations on there. This is Mel Majoros. I am the Cancer Warrior. You can always find me on Facebook because I am a Facebook junkie, Mel Majoros. Become a fan of the show, The Cancer Warrior, on EmpowerRadio.com on Facebook. Check out my blog, TheCancerWarrior.blogspot.com. And as always, life looks pretty good from where I'm sitting. Sending you good vibes. It's The Cancer Warrior on EmpowerRadio.com. <laughs>